What's going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and um, so I'm making this video because uh, I want to discuss a little bit further this whole situation with Tua and you know the quarterback switch. Uh, because for a couple reasons, one, I got a really good question uh, on I believe my last video uh, that I want to answer, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a Q and A, and also because I I you know kind of wanna. You know get into this a little more after having just watched several videos uh i watched a few clips from pat mcafee's uh per uh you know a um recommendation from if you bear with me a recommendation from david pitts uh told me to check out his because there he actually told me to check out kyle van noy's segment um, that was actually from a few weeks ago. Uh, anyway, so I watched a few of those. I'm going to discuss that real quick and then, or to, you know, in this conversation and then also answer his question. Uh, he has a new question uh, that I want to answer and get more into. So I'm just going to go chronologically through the videos I watched. Uh, the first one I watched was of Kyle Van Noy. It was about three weeks ago. And they asked him, you know, so how's Tua doing? When do you think it's going to be time? And the way he framed his answer was two is awesome he's great he's gonna be great at some point i'm paraphrasing here but it's all about fitz magic i guarantee you that this divided there's a there's some sort of divide i don't know if it's gonna be 50 50 70 30 what one way or the other but there's gonna be some sort of divide there's gonna there are definitely gonna be players that are gonna be like whoa what happened here, right? Now, if they go on and he does well and, you know, especially since Fitz is, you know, a humble guy and taking it on the chin like a champ, like a real champ, because, boy, they put it on his fucking chin. Uh, anyway, so, like, um, you know, but if he goes on to win, especially because they're playing the Rams when they come out of their bye week, and Aaron Donald is on that line, not to mention you know, a few other people that are really good on that team, uh, including Jalen Ramsey. So they're, it's not going to be like the, the 49ers, for example, right? The 49ers didn't have cover guys. They didn't have corners. They didn't have pass rushers. So our, our offense was allowed to pretty much do almost anything. With Ryan Fitzpatrick taking charge and knowing how to read defenses and so on and so forth, right? That's going to lead into his question. But so... Um, Anyway, he talked about it, and he was like, look, it's Fitzy, so there's going to be some kind of a divide, right? Then I, I, I watched a couple of his other videos, and the first, uh, then the next video was about the news, it happening, and Tua being named, you know, the starter and whatever. And, you know, Pat McAfee said a couple things that I want to uh, mention, right, so, or discuss a little bit. So, you know, he had, first thing is, is, he said, you know, this might have just been part of the plan. You know, come bye week, they were going to do it. But that couldn't be it because they thought that their bye week was going to be week 11. And if it was, they were expecting it to be then. So why then, you know, uh, why would they change their plans with the bye week? What I'm saying is, is if they thought he was going to be ready by week 11 and feel comfortable to do it then, uh, and it just so happens, you know, that's when the bye week was and it'll work out great you know, blah, 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 that wouldn't, you know, that line of thinking wouldn't change or shouldn't change really uh, simply because the schedule got reshuffled because of COVID, right? It doesn't make sense, right? They're not really related things, right? And it kind of plays to the point of where, you know, I, if this was the plan, why not just wait until the end of practice next week, right before the game? That way you can at least be like, He's just had a you know great practice, blah, blah, and then they could have actually told the entire team instead of having it be leaked. Also, I want to mention he said that they're apparently looking for the person who leaked this information so they can punish him. Dude, that's authoritarian and it's bullshit. Like, no, you should not be a fucking scumbag in on multiple levels. One, not fucking you know decide this behind the scenes. Just come out and fucking tell your team, right? They're supposed to trust you. Right? And so come out and fucking tell them. Don't even give it an opportunity for somebody to fucking leak this information because it's huge information. 
And second, don't even make the decision to begin with because there's no practical reason. The only reason, again, that it's happening is because of the hype. I'm telling you, there's, they're literally, I mean, they can say whatever they want, but logically there really is no other reason, you know, and, and unless you, uh, specifically say the other reason is, is that Ross told him to, but that's pretty much the same thing because Ross would dictate or demand that Tua be put in because of the hype. The hype over how well his injury's been, the hype over, you know, when the fans fucking went ecstatic when Tua went in for fucking four plays or five plays or whatever it was, right? So no matter what, it would come back to that. And uh, anyway, so it's, it's just, it's fucking crazy, bro. So, and, but that's bullshit. If they are doing that, that's total bullshit. Or if they fire somebody over that, nah, that like, that's just fucking, you know, shifting responsibility, not having accountability for your own fucking actions, your own shitty actions at that. Um, anyway, but then, you know, and he, you know, and he said stuff like, oh, you know, uh, Fitz was probably told about this. It was probably expected. You know, he's probably cool with it. And then he makes another video after Fitz comes out in the press conference, which I also watched. And... Oh my God, Fitz was like mortified. You could tell he was fucking mortified. He said it pretty plainly, but he was fucking mortified and shocked. Didn't expect it at all. And why should he? Why should he? He got them back to 500. They're three and three. He, the team seems to be doing well, certainly because they're staying healthy uh, more so than other teams. And he's playing solid. He's playing pretty damn good overall, right? So why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. And especially when, uh, when you then take into uh, account some other things, which we're going to get to with David's question uh, in a minute. Um, but so keep all of this in mind, right? So Mitz, or Mitz, Fitz was definitely mortified and shocked, etc. Um, you know, and then I watched one about, you know, is he going to request a trade? He said pretty plainly that he's not going to. So you know, whatever, and I, I wouldn't expect him to, if they, like, went out of their way to trade him, because we did talk about that, if they went out of their way to trade him, oh my god, I mean, you could, if they did that, there's no more dirty they could do by him, right, to just suddenly fucking snatch the keys from him, and then especially after he said how it broke his heart, and he felt like this was, besides Buffalo, this was the only place that he felt like it was his team, and then if they go out of their way to trade him, I don't know that that's happening. But if they did that, I mean, that is like about as low as you can fucking go. And they've already, you know, gone pretty low uh, with how they treated Kenny Stills and, you know, lying to fucking Laramie Tunsil saying, we're not going to trade you and then trade him. It, it Really, Tunsil's and for those who want to be like oh but Tunsil even said I would have done it too. And then, you know, people who want to bring up the business side that shit's irrelevant. First of all, Tunsil's uh, opinion on it is irrelevant because it doesn't change the shittiness of what happened. He might, you know, uh, deflect and be like, oh, you know, whatever, man, and this, that, and the other, but it still doesn't change how fucked up a thing that is. And, you know, I'm sure he felt some kind of way about it, but he's, you know, a good dude and he's not going to fucking, you know, whatever. But how would you feel if that shit happened to you? If you were promised something and then they, you know, you were completely fucking lied to, etc. Anyway, whatever. And then I watched the press conferences with Jerome Baker, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Tua. And Bake, uh, I mean, you know, Baker's a good kid. He, um, he's a good football player. But you could tell his entire line of responses was all just the very, you know, PC, politically correct, uh, you know, uh, vague, generalized answers uh, that, you know, they're not meant to offend anybody, right? And so, uh, and I think in part because he probably didn't really know what to say. It seemed like it. It seemed like, you know, he definitely did what I do when I'm thinking about things and I do a lot of ums and I'm like, you know, whatever, right? Like, likes and stuff like that. He definitely was thrown off by it. You could tell. Um, 
Fitz went on, like I said, he was mortified. I mean, you can just tell. He was oozing with, you know, and he said it. His heart was broken, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then even when Tua came on, you know, you could tell that the kid was uncomfortable. I mean, he seems like a good kid, and, you know, I hope him the best. I hope he stays healthy and doesn't get hurt, you know, and I hope he succeeds. I really do. But it is going to be tough, man. It is going to be super tough. And if they start, if he goes in and it doesn't go well, man, things are, I, I'm telling you, this this is likely to prove to be a massive mistake by the Dolphins. The only way that it won't be is if he, you know, goes out there and plays like a fucking superstar. But that could be difficult to even accomplish for a number of reasons. One, because injuries do seem to be mounting up. Two, uh, now the added um, factor being this whole situation to begin with and how it came to be, the timing of it, the way it happened, you know, et cetera, et cetera, could cause, you know, some feelings within that locker room. But also, and finally giving, uh, getting to uh, David Pitts, uh, his comment, um, or rather his question, because this is super relevant, right? So uh, he apologized for multiple comments, which is totally fine. Um, I definitely don't have an issue with that, especially as he mentioned. He keeps thinking of other stuff to add, and I get that. He said, though, I think an interesting thing I'd like to hear my opinion on is how much better this O-line may possibly look be simply because of how quick Fitz gets the ball out, about how much better they all are on offense because of when Fitz audibles and the things he notices pre-snap. Fitz is third fastest quarterback in the league right now with getting the ball out of his hands on passes. Tua is known to hold the ball longer, and Omar Kelly wouldn't name the player, but said a player said, Tua's all right, but he isn't Fitz. And another player or may have been the same guy. Uh, I'm not sure, said Tua only knows like 40% of the offense, and how player doesn't understand the move at all, nor like it. So, well, so, you know, I mean... You guys know how I feel about Omar Kelly. I think he's generally a clown because because he says a lot of wonderfully like logical things, but then he will literally then have an opinion that is completely contradictory to that opinion. He has the most ridiculous back and forth opinions. So I do find him to be a bit of a clown. However, he does have contacts within the organization. So him getting quotes from players like that is not unreasonable at all. And so, you know, there's some evidence to show you, one, that there are definitely some feelings about this, but really getting to the more substantive point, and um, which also does further prove what I've been saying about how the only reason why that this switch was made is because of the, the fanfare and the hype, etc., and potentially because Steven Ross, you know, made the fucking demand to put two in whatever um is is how is he going to perform right so you you obviously have the injury concern right and, and for me personally when i watch the game especially this next game because this is going to be the first game where they're actually going to have to face a defensive line i mean we'll see unless you know god forbid because you don't want to see anybody get hurt i mean unless like you know aaron donald and their defensive line gets decimated by injuries in this next game this week which i will be watching and doing a live stream for so we'll find out but unless that happens then they are going to have the hardest test that they have had by far in this game against the rams so maybe they'll luck out and they'll get hurt i don't know but um yeah i mean his question is a great one uh and because as you guys should know i don't think this dolphins team is is as good as people are let, hyping them up to be why because yes they've played some damn good football on their side right and that's part of the equation that's an absolute relevant and important piece of the the pie to take into consideration of course but that's not the whole pie there are more relevant factors and so it is very important to know that teams have been decimated by injuries, especially when you look at the past two wins. Both the Jets and the 49ers are two of the most injury-riddled teams in the league. Like, it's just not even fucking close, right? And then, of course, you take with the Jets into context the fact that they are 
already a troubled team to begin with, etc., etc., and that's why their performance was not as dominant as it should have been. It should have been far more dominant. More like the 49ers game, ironically. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, so, you know, if, if it's true that he only knows 40% of the offense, that's going to be pretty problematic, especially because, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I know for sure, knows it because he's been with Chan Gailey before. That's part of why they said bringing Chan Gailey in was awesome and why they had to fire Chad O'Shea, or, well, not why they had to fire him, but, you know, why he was the next guy to, to bring in after Chad O'Shea, right? So um, that could be a problem. Uh, two is known to hold the ball long. I mean, I didn't really watch him at Alabama, but that will be a problem in the NFL, especially against guys like Aaron Donald. He's not going to have that time to be able to just sit there. And if he, you know, I mean, he needs time. And this is why I don't understand. What is people's, like, weird adverse reaction to quarterbacks redshirting a year? I don't get why they just want to throw him in. I mean, it's like, and Tua even said it in the postgame video. He said, he said he mentioned, or I mean, not the postgame video, in the press conferences today. He said himself. He's like, look, you know, things that I have to do at the offense, uh, at the line and for the offense, calling audibles, like he mentions, you know, getting guys lined up, you know, reading defenses and the, all the different looks that he's going to get. Like, he didn't have to do that in fucking college, right? He didn't have to think about that shit. He's going to have to now. But guess what? He's not going to have the time to process it. They're going to be coming for him. And that increases the risk of him getting hit and injured. I'm telling you, bro, this, man, they are going to fucking, they are going to have to luck out for this to really go well. This, uh, man, I mean, I, I've said it a million times. People keep telling me I'm negative. Look, I don't want these things to be. They keep proving me right, okay? So have an issue with them, all right? But like, I don't want it to happen, but my biggest fear is is that he's going to go in, he's not going to be ready for it, whether it's physically or fucking, you know, with the playbook or with reads, with, you know, uh, identifying defenses. Bro, I mean, it's there is a potential nightmare on the horizon with this decision. And, you know, like I said, my biggest fear is is that He is not going to go, or he's not going to be ready for it when he goes in. The Rams are are a tough team, man. And if they have their guys, they are going to be heating him up, especially since they know there's a rookie quarterback going to be in. I guarantee you they are going to be disguising things. They're going to be bringing pressures and blitzes. They are going to do everything that they can to fuck with him. And so there is a recipe for disaster brewing. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know what, though? And look, at the end of the day, my feeling, and this is, you know, this is how I'll wrap this video, but my my feeling is, is, is that the reason, as I mentioned, the reason why I believe that this has happened is because of all of the fanfare and the hype around Tua after he was put into the game uh, against the Jets, right? I mean, to begin with, of course, the first, uh, you know, fifth overall pick, uh, the first round pick, uh, first first round pick of the Dolphins, whatever, the franchise quarterback, blah, 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 already endorsement deals, etc. But then after he touched the field, it was that taste and it was too much, it was too much. And so, but my guess is, is that Ross told Flores, it's time. You have to put him in because that's what he wants. That's what Ross wants. Okay. And... That's why we tanked last year. That's why he fired Adam Gase. That's why, or at least in part, right? Um, I'm sure fucking he would probably say that, you know, the step back that they took in year two and three, even though none of that was really even his fault because of the myriad uh, other factors that played, a, you know, a role and and how those years turned out, um, it was in large part because he did not acquiesce to uh, Ross's demands to tank the season for a quarterback, right? So they literally did that last year for that reason. It's been six games. 
Ross saw him on the field. There was an electric response from fans and the media, and now he wants it. That's my guess. My guess is, is that Ross ordered this, and, uh, bro, I'm telling you, it's going to be a disaster. But he's not going to take responsibility if it is, right? He's going to be happy to take responsibility if it turns out wonderful and he stays healthy and doesn't get, you know, his face smashed in every game and uh, wins and plays like a superstar and we get to the playoffs. If that miracle happens, um, by the way, I'd also like to note Cynthia Froyland, her, you know, projections or her uh, stat-based fucking predictions, whatever, uh, actually said that taking Fitz out drops the Dolphins' chance for playoffs from 43.3% to 40%, in part because of the rookie shit, right? So, anyway, he's not, Ross is not going to fucking at all take the blame. So, you know, that I mean, right or wrong, this is going to fall on Flores' head. Um, now, I think... He definitely, absolutely does bear responsibility because, I mean, after saying the bullshit remarks and proving that he's just nothing but a liar about how, oh, my kid's this, I wouldn't want to, their coach is rushing him in that, and, you know, the comments about, oh, well, what's the point in putting him in for, you know, garbage time if he's only going to hand it off for a few plays, you know, talking about the 49ers game just to do it in the fucking Jets game, right? Like, he said all that bullshit. And then, you know, completely 180, you know, within two weeks, right? And it's, so he definitely bears blame. But if Ross did order him to do it, then obviously some of that does come off of him and then fall squarely onto Ross's shoulders for giving the order because that's his boss, right? So, uh, Man, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a wild wild ride going forward. Uh and look, man, I mean, I said this earlier. I think it's almost impossible for Tua, I mean, for Flores to change his mind and take Tua out. Right now, I think it ha I think he has to play in the game against the Rams at this point. I don't think there's any choice because he made the decision. And um it made such a splash, right? Like you, you can't turn back at this point. What will what will make it turn back is if Tua gets injured, or if you know he proves that he's not ready because he's a rookie, and you know that's not a knock on him. It's just the way it goes because the NFL is a completely different speed than in college, and he knows that. So you know. Woo, man, I mean, it's, fuck, dude, that, that game against the Rams is going to be huge, and frankly, it could be, it could be a defining moment for this franchise, it could be a defining moment for Tua's career, or at least maybe even with the Dolphins, uh, it could be a defining moment for Flores' career, it depends on what happens. But all of those things could potentially be hanging in the balance with the de with this decision that was made and how the rest of this year uh, plays out. So, woo, boy, man, we are in for a wild ride. Uh, yeah, all right. So that's what I got to say. That is the additives to this uh, shit pie that uh, is being made here. Um, Jesus Christ. This shit is going to be wild. All right. That's the, the additions I got for you. And uh, hopefully that answers the question. Look, uh, well, real quick to, to try and answer the question a little more directly. Yes, I absolutely think that Fitz has way more of a command over this offense. And there are going to be those, um, you know, hiccups for Tua. It's impossible to think that he's going to be perfect. So, man... Buckle up. It's going to be interesting. All right. With that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspectives. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, concerns down in the comments section. And, of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. See you all soon. Fins up.